All right, hey everybody. Um, I thought I'd make a little uh, video study guide for you to work off of as you study for the test. Um, I think video is a really great way to study short of actually getting to see the minerals yourself in person. So um, start off with graphite. Graphite is a very silvery uh, mineral. It's very soft. You can draw on it. It's what pencil lead is made out of. You can So you can draw this on your paper and actually get a line off of it. That's a pretty diagnostic way of doing it on the test. Um, We've got pyrite, this, in this case it's iron pyrite or fool's gold. Uh, I don't know how much is coming out in the video, but it's, you can get varying shades of sparkliness. Um, sometimes it's super sparkly, other times it's not. It basically looks like gold, except it's a lot harder. Uh, if you were to do a streak of this on a streak plate, uh, it'd be brownish in color, actually. Uh, but uh, in the hand sample size is gold and sparkly. Uh, next up is galena. You do not want to lick this because this is lead sulfide. Um, it has it's really shiny as well. Uh, it can easily be mistaken for graphite, except that it's actually shinier, and it comes in these. It's got these uh, three planes of cleavage. It kind of breaks off in cubes. Also, it feels really heavy for how big it is. It's very dense, which is what you would expect if it's got lead in it. Uh, next up, we've got sphalerite, which kind of uh, has this has these yellow uh, grains in it. Sphalerite is used um, as zinc ore, and zinc is used in brass, so like brass doorknobs. They would mine sphalerite and process the zinc out of it and, uh, and melt it down with other, with other metals to form brass. Next up is chalcopyrite, not to be confused with regular pyrite. Um, it can often look very similar to regular pyrite. It's got this gold shine to it, except that it it tends to be a bit greener and darker and not quite as sparkly, but the thing you want to keep in mind is that it usually looks a little bit greener. So this is chalcopyrite. It's spelled with a CH. It's not chalcopyrite. It's chalcopyrite. Next up is halite, table salt. And it's got three planes of perfect uh, cleavage. It'll break into cubes. It'll taste extremely salty uh, if you want to risk licking it. I don't necessarily recommend that you do. However, it is sterile because bacteria can't live on salt. Um, next up, we've got magnetite, which tends to be sparkly. Um, see, I, yeah, the sparkle is really coming out in the video here. And it is weak. It, it, it can be magnetic. In this case, it's only weakly magnetic. Maybe the sample just sucks, or maybe my magnet sucks. But, um, it's a diagnostic test that's just stick a magnet to it, and that'll tell you if it's magnetite or not. Made out of a very similar thing involving iron is hematite, which can be kind of a dull silvery colors all the way over to red. Um, but uh, the streak should always be the same color, um, and it has no cleavage at all. Uh, next up is limonite. It's crumbly and reddish looking. Often ha looks very porous. So you can see here in the video. That's limonite. Next up is bauxite, which is aluminum ore. And it tends to have all these little round guys in there. You can see this is limonite. No, I'm sorry, this is bauxite. This is bauxite. Now next up, we didn't have this in lab, but I would expect all of you to be able to recognize it. This is a mineral uh, that has no that uh, fractures when you break it, uh, and it's called ice. You freeze water below 32 Fahrenheit or 0 Celsius uh, at 1 atmosphere of pressure, and it turns into ice. And if you can tell it's ice, if you hold it in your hand, it starts to melt. Okay. Um, so we have milky quartz up next. This is extremely hard. You can scratch glass with it. Um, it will not react with acid. Uh, it has no cleavage, it has a fracture pattern to it, and it's made up of a bunch of little bits of crystalline quartz, where, let's see, you usually have like a, if it's a good crystal, it's got a pointy end there, that's nice, it's got this pointy end on it, and it's multi-sided, I think it's hexagonal. Uh, this is not cleavage, however. This is just how it grows. If you were to if you were to break this, it would just fracture all over the place. There are no planes of weakness in it. Uh, next up, we have hornblende, which is black, and 
I don't know if you can tell in the video, but hornblende is a type of amphibole, and it has all these stubby grains in it. It almost looks like wood grain. Here, here's a good face, maybe. I don't know if you can see right there. There are these stubby uh, mineral grains that are all basically aligned in one direction for any given area on the on the hand sample. Um, so this uh, this is hornblende. Uh, talc. It's shiny, it's white, you can scratch it with your fingernail and it'll powder off. Uh, this is where they get talcum powder. And the reason it feels so nice on babies' bottoms is because it's really soft. Uh, next up we've got uh, mica. In this case we have the mineral muscovite, which is clear to white. And it comes in these little sheets. One sheet accidentally just flaked off. Um, but it flakes apart very easily. This is a plant of perfect cleavage. Um, it's just, this sucker just likes to flake apart. Okay, next up we've got Orthoclase Feldspar, which is pink in color. It's also, along with quartz, it should be the only thing that uh, will, scratch, um, will scratch glass. If you have a grass, glass scratch plate, you should be able to scratch it with there. It does have cleavage, although it's not always obvious. Here's a plane of cleavage. Orthoclase tends to be pink. It's a type of orthoclase called potassium feldspar. So you've got some planes of cleavage there, and it's pink. It's also very hard. Uh, we've got plagioclase feldspar, which is darker. It sometimes can get confused for granite, but it's not. It's one of the constituents of granite. You can get nice countertops made out of this stuff. Uh, this is a type of plagioclase called Labradorite, which comes from the Canadian province of Labrador. Um, garnet. Uh, individual garnet grains, garnet uh, crystals in here uh, are, are pretty small. You can get much bigger ones, um, and jewelers like to collect it. Uh, it's a common birthstone. Um, it's reddish in color, quite hard. And so this, this hand sample that I'm holding is a conglomeration of a lot of garnet. Um, and it, I'm actually not sure if it has cleavage or if it just grows in a certain pattern, but it is multi-sided. Okay. And, okay, I already did that. And finally, I think we have calcite, right? Um, yeah, calcite. So calcite, um, has three planes of perfect cleavage. It kind of breaks off into these skewed, like a, as my mom would use the term squeegeed, uh, a skewed box. It looks like a box that someone uh, slanted over on itself. And this is the only sample that we have in lab that will react to acid. If you powder it, you, it'll react with vinegar, which is acetic acid. Uh, and if without powdering it, it'll react to hydrochloric acid, to a weak solution of hydrochloric acid. So it's got perfect cleavage, it looks like a slanted box, and it reacts to acid. So uh, I suggest that you watch this video a few times and then turn the sound off and see if you can identify things um, based on what it looks like. And hopefully we'll get another chance to play with these samples uh, in lab before the test. So happy studying.